some bad news. Well, I hope that somebody of you uh, might have expected me to uh, demonstrate some physical exercises here. Bad news for you, sorry, um, but um, I'm not a certified fitness instructor, and uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but uh, what we will speak about uh, is uh, mind fitness. So get ready for some brain work, uh, although I guess that you're already tuned very well for that, for that purpose. Well, why step back, leap forward? Well, um, simply because Lithuania is a, a country of basketball players, you know, and in Lithuania almost everybody considers the, uh, himself uh, an expert in basketball. So um, anyone could tell you that uh, in order to jump higher or further, you usually make a very small step backwards, right? Physically, I mean. And the same is with, with history. History is a huge source of inspiration, of encouragement, of, um, well, knowledge, and every other things which can really enrich you uh, very much. Well, uh, when you look at these pictures, of course, you might ask me, and it would be fairly uh, dumb, uh, is this still relevant? Is this has anything to do with uh, today? Well, the answer is yes. And here you see the illustration for this belief. Because if you would look very closely to these two pictures, you can hardly really find 10 differences uh, although the time difference between the pictures is almost 80 years. What you see in these pictures are the guys with the black boxes. And it's not really very important what are those boxes, although it is interesting, of course, because the black and white picture shows you three aviators, American aviators, two of them are by a Lithuanian origin, and these are Stanley Gerenas, famous American aviator Jimmy Matter, well, supposedly Gyrocompass, which was quite a novelty in civil aviation uh, that, those times, and Stephen Darius. And here in colored one, you see students from Chennai, which is in India, working on their CubeSat. And basically, these uh, two pictures shows uh, the idea, which was already told you before today, that you know, time changes, uh, habits, traditions, technology, science, um, whatever, uh, climate, even the United States dollar, we'll see what happens with the euro. Everything changes, except people themselves. People remain the same. And that's why in history you can find a lot of millions, dozens, thousands of inspiring uh, stories about people. And especially these people, what you can see in these pictures, adventures, obsessed with the ideas, uh, adventures, discoverers, uh, dear devil dreamers, they were always the same. So why then so many people imagine history like, you know, a black square? Well, I think there are three reasons for that. First of all, lack of knowledge. Then, um, unwillingness to broaden horizons, to overstep the frontiers of your knowledge. And the third thing is simple prejudice. And I will uh, share uh, two best examples from my experience. Uh, the first story, which led me to archival research, was uh, the research of the biography of this person who is a uh, fighter pilot, Ramos Martinkus. I'll remind you very briefly his story. 
He was a captain in the Lithuanian Air Force, a navigator in a famous Andal flight around Europe in 1934. Just uh, to explain a little bit, Andal was a, uh, an aircraft, reconnaissance aircraft, constructed and built and flown by Lithuanian Air Force for more than a decade. And the flight around Europe was a tremendous success. Uh, and then in uh, the hardest times, in 1940, he just disappeared from Lithuania, no any trace at all. And uh, what uh, I was privileged to dig out, that he really escaped in order just to fulfill his mission as a fighter pilot, as a war pilot, and became a trainee at the French Air Force Base. And of course, uh, very quickly was uh, sent with the other officers to North Africa and then escaped again just to uh, join Royal Air Force in Great Britain and to become a hurricane fighter pilot. And uh, well, he was shut down in 42 in a famous operation called Cerberus and became the prisoner of war in a notorious Talag Luft uh, Camp uh, 3 and became um, a key member of the Great Escape in 1944, which is sometimes called one of the biggest sensations of the World War II, and uh, uh, was uh, caught with the other officers and shot. And the Great Escape, of course, is a worldwide known event, uh, which was uh, showed in a, a famous uh, classical Hollywood mo movie of the same title, The Great Escape. So it's the great story. Uh, so it was, now it, it sounds like a great story, but the thing was that the story was discovered by the British Embassy in Vilnius about a decade ago. And what they did, they brought Harrier fighters from Great Britain and uh, made a huge ceremony uh, just to honor this Lithuanian who actually was not known in his native country. And everybody was so happy about that and everybody clapped their hands, although you know, it, w it, it had to be hard to not ask this question, how it could happen that we didn't know nothing about this man? So I went to historians and asked them a question, uh, why hadn't you uh, made any research about him? And they say, said, uh, well, because he's just one of the guys. And I thought to myself, okay, really? Because if he would be one of the guys, we would have uh, Royal Air Force Harriers circling about, uh, above uh, the old town of Vilnius nearly every day, you know. There's plenty of guys, but it didn't happen just for that reason. Uh, that Ramos Martinkus was an outstanding personality. And it was a great fun, really, to see the transition after uh, research, which uh, was two years long, uh, transition from an almost forgotten personality with a big name and a big time, big time here in Lithuania. And it happens uh, nowadays that uh, school children, for example, when they write uh, their essays, rate Ramos Martinkus as uh, best of the best aviators in Lithuanian history, which sounds too good to be true, frankly, but uh, we'll skip that discussion. The essence, the idea is change. When you uh, try uh, to look at the history subject without any prejudice and ready to actually broaden your horizons. Well, the next example, even better, Stephen Darius, Stanley Gerenas. Well, raise your hand if you're not familiar with these names. If you're not familiar. Translated or real ones? <laughs> not one hand, I can see, in this audience. Well, for those who, who are uh, foreigners, uh, just to tell you, uh, I'll give you a, a funny example. You can hardly find a town or a city in Lithuania which would not have the street, the object, any other place called by the names Darius and Gerenas just to honor these national Lithuanian heroes. Uh, so Darius and Gerenas is like basketball itself. Everybody considers himself you know, an expert in Darius and Gerenas' story. Everything is known, 
no questions here. So why don't we play a little game right now? Please, just try to forget everything. What you were taught, what you heard about this story, and try to listen without any prejudice. We'll see what happens. So, Stephen Dara's Stanley Givens. Millions know the story. A lot of books are published. Even more publications are available. And when you read just one book, it looks like, well, okay, this is the story. But when you read dozens of books and publications, all of a sudden, you cannot escape thinking, my goodness, it looks weird. Because what you notice are the same questions being asked again and again and again for almost 80 years. And somehow, no answers whatsoever. Why? Well, let's go. Very briefly, Darius and Givianus, they were veterans of World War I. Um, they served in American Army, and then afterwards came back to Chicago, uh, tried to settle up their own small businesses. They both owned their own uh, airplanes, and were the barnstormers of Chicago till 1932. Uh, Stephen Darius were even more busy. He managed to spend seven years in Lithuanian Air Force in Konas. Um, and then in 1933, they were succeed uh, to accomplish their lifetime dream. Uh, they became the transatlantic pilots. They flew from New York. Uh, their uh, final destination was Konas, which was the capital of Lithuania back then. Uh, but they crashed in Solden. And nevertheless, they accomplished the uh, second longest non-stop flight at the time. And uh, the guys which beat them, beat them in, in, in those years were the guys who actually dropped the landing gear after they took off, you know? So they had some, in some ways, uh, better, better situation and uh, better circumstances just to uh, fly further. Uh, and anyways, of course, they became national heroes and they still remain. Uh, to make a long speech short, just again to, to remind you, July 17th, 1933, Chicago Flyers, citizens of the United States, states are found dead in airplane crash in Nazi Germany near the town of Solden. Millions know the story of Stephen Darius and Stanley Givianas. Many details still unknown and no published archival research exists. Uh, what you see here is the map used by the pilots, and you see New York, uh, the place they took off, and you see the last picture of the pilots uh, right before they uh, took off from uh, field, uh, Floyd Bennett Airfield in New York, early in the morning, July 15th, 1933. And what you see here is um, the picture which was uh, delivered by international news agencies actually to dozens of countries in Europe and uh, other places. And uh, it shows the crash site in a place uh, which was then Nazi Germany and now it's Poland, uh, not far away from a town of Solden or now it is Mislebuz in Poland. And uh, of course, uh, the, that was the big news huge sensation, and as it happened on a German soil, of course, German officials started the official investigation right away. Um, and what happened overnight is really, uh, it cannot be explained right now. Of course, there are no any, you know, ghost busting, woo woo, nothing scary at all, but what we just simply lack documentation just to explain uh, comprehensively, coherently, uh, what happened overnight, uh, on what kind of basis uh, the, the bodies of the pilots, all their personal belongings, uh, the uh, parts, uh, remaining parts of the aircraft, everything was brought to Lithuania, and there it all still remains. Well, um, the New York Times 
published a very short message telling that uh, the um, United States State Department uh, waived all formalities which might stand in the way of the state uh, burial by Lithuania, but still uh, no any official statements by uh, Washington officials was made, and uh, all other countries involved, and that is Germany and Lithuania, hesitated to deliver any kind of information for the public, and that's why, of course, media spread different rumors, hints, speculations very quickly, and those speculations of course, circulate around till this day. Why? Simply because of the lack of a documentation. And uh, here we can see the um, documents of the Lithuanian and German investigations. And actually what happened, they could not, or they didn't manage to, or they probably uh, had no any basis uh, to answer the essential questions. And here is, of course, uh, not the full list, just a few facts uh, which uh, are called in general as a mystery of Solden. So just to give you an idea, Route of Lithuanica is unknown, records of the flight gone, last 90 minutes of flight witnessed yet unclear, logbook of the aircraft is lost, crash site cleaned up in a few hours, one third of the aircraft disappeared, German concentration camp was not far away and yet it is unidentified till this day, two of, or even five other airplanes crashed in the same vicinity, According to the media, world media spread rumors about shooting, but German legation in Kaunas issued a march to Lithuanian officials uh, and institutions. And of course, the uh, governments kept silent, and that's why uh, witnesses remain contradictory till this day. So uh, what you basically have here is a typical international uh, historical event, because uh, well, the uh, flight was organized and launched in the United States. The crash itself happened in uh, Solden, which was Nazi Germany at the time. Uh, the remaining uh, of the pilots and the aircraft were brought to independent Lithuania. But what's interesting, the time difference between them is more than 30 years. And that indicates that the bodies of the pilots were buried only in 1964 in Soviet Lithuania. Well, that's a tricky thing. And really, this part of the story was never told before, coherently, comprehensively, and impartially. Again, no any ghosts, no scary things, no mysteries, uns uh, unsolved, uns uh, which can be solved, uh, but yet, uh, no archival research was ever done, not only in Lithuania, but also in Germany and the United States, and thus we just simply lack argumentation, and so we cannot put the events in that logical chain. Uh, simply, you know, it's the only way to tell the story, right? You, you have to have all, all the facts uh, bounded together. And, uh, well, I really very much hope that the answers to the last part of the story still lies somewhere in special archives in Lithuania, maybe here in Vilnius, but maybe in some other part of the world, because with the archives, it's a tricky thing, you may never know. <laughs> so, uh, what we began to do from March, uh, we worked in different archives in Vilnius, in Konas, and Chicago, until this day, we've read, analyzed, and put in some certain kind of a database around 20,000 written documents. And I can tell you that it might be a one-eighth or one-tenth of the whole documentation which is yet to be uh, found, discovered, and analyzed. And you know, I must tell you, it again reminds the story uh, of, the, of uh, Ramos Marcinkus. Because, of course, uh, you could meet some people, and I, I'm still meeting them, uh, which are, you know, saying just, uh, hey lady, uh, don't you think it's just a waste of time? <laughs> you know, because it's Darius and Giranus. What you're looking for, it's yesterday, and yesterday's gone. Well, I think 
is that so really? Um, if nobody did it before, all right, I'll take the risk and I'll do that. And I really uh, hope very much that we'll have more discoveries uh, similar to this one. Uh, this picture shows you Stanley Balzikas in Chicago, the owner of uh, the private museum, who opened the um, museum's archives for the first time for the researchers, and we had full access to that uh, documentation, which was locked for decades. And of course, parallelically, we worked with the computer graphics designers uh, and experts, just trying to reconstruct different objects and events from that story. And uh, it usually works like that. You, you, you get information, the data, from the documents and then you pass it for those artists. And what you see here, of course, is an artistical interpretation of the last leg of the flight of Lituanica. Lituanica was the name of, of, of the aircraft, of course. But what I hope you will see in a year or two will be the state of the art 3D computer animation, which will show you very detailed, very precisely based on a documental evidence uh, route of Lituanica and of course the moment of the crash and all other circumstances which are essential to understand. So basically these are the uh, themes which uh, we are working on and uh, we very much hope to reconstruct the flight route New York sold it and also last 90 minutes which we have witnessed uh, moment of crash and crash site itself and of course we'll use all kind of maps and charts available and uh, what's interesting as well uh, we'll make the aircraft 3D x-ray so to say uh, and uh, I very much hope that it will stop finally the speculations about the missing parts of the airplane and of course uh, we'll uh, tell the story a dramatic story of the pilot's bodies uh, which were involved, then concealed, and left in concealment for more than almost 20, 20 years. Uh, and uh, just to tease you a little bit more with Darius and Gerena's story, here you can see Lithuania like it is now. Well, the building is somewhat uh, Tsarist times kitchen. <laughs> Uh, and the thing is that the um, exhibition of Lithuanica in Kaunas, in the War Museum, is under reconstruction right now. And again, this gives you a unique opportunity to work with the remains of the aircraft, uh, to invite the best experts you, you, you can find, and uh, to again uh, make the proper examination of all those details and, of course, obtain more data from, from those remains. So, of course, yes, when you look at the story this way, uh, I have no doubt that uh, it story of Lithuania will be retold in a completely other way. And I would like just to uh, finish this playing with you and ask if anybody of you got any new uh, information about Darius and Girena's uh, in the last 10 minutes. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Lots of hands here. So you can see, well, this was a short game just to give you an idea uh, about history, about your approach, about your attitude, and about your mind fitness, really. Because what we did right now was exercising, was brain work, and this is history. And uh, well, I really very much looking forward to hear from you because as I told, everybody is an expert of this story. And if you will hesitate to contact me directly, just to let you know, I hope that in a year to come, uh, there will be a special website of this project. So you'll just type in uh, keywords, that is Girianas and First International uh, Research, and I'll meet you there. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.